Okay, today we're going to talk about how to sandwich quotations in your academic writing. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, should I be using a quote here? The reasons you might want to use a quote and why they might be necessary to make your point is because they are particularly eloquent or powerful, something like a line of poetry or maybe a line of dialogue or just something that's put in a way that is so eloquent that if you put it in your own words, it would ruin it. Uh, you also want to aim for quotations that are short. Oftentimes, you can make your quotation in academic writing a fragment of a sentence, not even a whole sentence, but keep it as short as possible. The goal with sandwiching is to avoid what's called either the hit and run quote, or I've also heard it called the quotation bomb. And what I have here on the screen is an example of a hit and run or a quotation bomb. We've got a quote and nothing comes before the quote, so we don't know who's talking or what the context is. And then the sentence after the quote maybe is related to the quote, but the connection is not clear to a reader. So this is what we want to avoid. The way you sandwich a quote is to make it like this sandwich metaphor. So the quote itself is like all of that meat and tomatoes and junk in there, but you want to sandwich it between your introduction of the quote as well as your explanation of the quote. So how do you introduce the quote? You use something called a narrative citation. This is also sometimes called a signal phrase or a tagline. I've seen all of these used to refer to it. Um, you use the author's last name, such as Brown, or you use something like the researchers or NASA's website or whoever is doing the talking. Some sort of phrase that introduces what we're talking about. Here's some other examples of verbs that work well for these kinds of narrative citations. But if you literally Google like narrative citation verb ideas, you'll get way more than this. These are just some common ones. And when you're reading academic writing, notice how other writers do this and notice which verbs and phrases they use to introduce the quotes that they're using and find the ones that you like and take inspiration from that. Okay. So here is an example of a quotation that is sandwiched in a nice way. In the yellow here, we have the top bread of the sandwich. We're introducing this as coming from the Gonzalez article and we're telling you that we're quoting a study participant. And then we have this cool quote that's kind of interesting in, to a reader, okay, about this guy having trouble with his computer. And then the bottom part of the sandwich is this explanation of what this quote means in the context of what we're writing about in this academic article. Okay, other things I just want you to pay attention to from an APA style perspective is that when you use a narrative citation, usually you're gonna be using the author's last name. And whenever you use the author's last name, APA wants you to put the year in parentheses after the author's last name like you're seeing there. Um, if you're using a direct quote, APA prefers that you use a page number and that's how it looks. Pay attention to the where that there's a P and a period and you'll notice another period after the final parenthesis. Um, P is for one page number. If it's multiple page numbers, you will use a PP um, with a period after it as well.